Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's United Church in Cambridge, Ontario on this beautiful sunny morning. Cool, but still a beautiful sunny morning. We are a community of faith reaching out to others through Christ. Thank you all for joining us in, the worship, in worship, both in the sanctuary and online this Palm Passion Sunday. Thank you to all who helped to enhance the worship service this morning. Andrew, Marion, Daria, choir, Mary, Sharon, and George, your gifts are indeed a treasure. A big thank you, some announcements, sorry. Yep. <laughs> a big thank you for the overwhelming response to our latest outreach campaign. We raised $1,000. $160 for Lazard House and the wonderful work they do in our community. So as Barb would say, yippee! <laughs> our Daily Bread Easter Reflection Booklets are still available at the back of the church for anyone who wishes to pick them up. The need is great. Please answer the call to help our neighbors. No item or amount is too small in helping support the Cambridge Food Bank. Our Good Friday service, come join our St. Luke's Choir as we sing together with Cedar Hill and Wesley on Friday the 29th at 10.30. The church is located at 6 Cambridge Street. For one day only, Cranky Frankie's food truck will come out of hibernation for Fish Friday. They, they will only be serving fish, so you will get one piece of haddock, eight ounce piece, fresh cut fries, tartar sauce, and cabbage slaw for $20, including tax. It is important to note that your meal must be pre-ordered. You can do that by emailing, calling or texting, or message them on Facebook. All these ways are on our web page and on Facebook. Uh, you can pick up your fish at the truck, which will be on St. Luke's driveway between 3 and 7.30. All orders will be confirmed and walk-ups are welcome while quantities last. There will be our sunrise service at Jacob's Landing on Easter Sunday at 7 a.m. with a potluck breakfast back at the church here. Easter Sunday, we will be having communion and there will be a goodwill offering as well. The UCW is starting their urge to purge. All donations are accepted. Sorry, there's another one. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, My, I was not aware of this one. Um, Broadview Magazine <laughs> subscription renewals are due April 14th. See Ken Douglas for the information if you require it. Or a new one, yeah. Okay. So um, there is not a slide for the urge to purge. There will be next week. But they are collecting clothing and accessories, textiles, and they can be brought in on the Sunday or uh, during Truck and Tuesday from 4 to 8, or Mondays, 10.30 till noon. And we will be continuing to speak about this. We just wanted you to start collecting your items. Oh, don't bring them till May. Okay, sorry. Okay, there's more information to follow. Yeah, don't bring them till May. Okay. Now, here's some exciting news back by popular demand, Soup's On. 
Tuesday, April 23rd from 6 to 8. Bring a crock pot of your favourite soup and the recipe to share. But if not, if uh, making soup does not fancy you, we need other things like rolls and butter, crackers and cheese, desserts that can be handheld, for example, squares or cookies. Beverages will be provided. There is a sign-up sheet at the back of the church. And as our Indigenous brothers and sisters would say, bring your feast bundle, which contains your soup bowl, mug, and utensils for eating. The feast bundle encompasses both the environment benefits of having a bag, as well as the responsibilities one has to Mother Earth and the community. Also, less cleanup at our kitchen. Remember, the winner will receive the coveted silver ladle. No competition here at St. Luke's. <laughs> and you will get to vote for your favourite. It's always a fun time with great food and great friends. We now welcome back Paul Neerham to the pulpit this morning. Hello, Paul. It's been a while since we've seen you, so thank you for being with us here today to lead us in worship, and we look forward to your thoughts and reflection. Thank you, Joni, and good morning to everyone. It's Palm Sunday. Be Before we get going in worship, we should take a moment to acknowledge that we are a treaty people. And as a treaty people, we are in the lands of the Haudenosaunee, the Ashinaabe, and the Anawandarang peoples. And it, they've taken care of the lands for many, many generations. And as treaty people, it is our responsibility to continue that generational thing of taking care of the lands so future generations can also benefit the way we have. We'll start our service with a musical intro from the choir. Um, I've been told by the choir that we will not be too distracting if we wave our palms. So um, if you've got palms, if you don't have, I believe there's a few at the back, but if you've got your palms coming in, feel free to wave the palms um, during the musical intro and during the hymns. Um, we've got them, let's, let's wave them. Oh, and the chorus is up on the screen so we can sing along in the chorus. Today our leader, Jesus, comes riding into Jerusalem on a donkey to show us a way of peace. As we follow Jesus through this week, as he journeys towards the cross, we light this candle to show us the way. Treasure the light in your heart 
and follow the light wherever it leads you this holy week. Please join me in the call to worship. We join with the crowd that eagerly awaits the coming of Jesus. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God, Hosanna in the highest. Fulfilling prophecy, Jesus entered the city riding humbly on a donkey. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus' followers were excited, filled with anticipation. Yet within a few short days, they were scattered, disillusioned, and frightened, unwilling to follow as far as Christ would have them go. We too long to join the triumphal procession only to find ourselves burdened by the past, fearful of the future, reluctant to accept the way of the cross. Yet this Palm Sunday, we receive palm branches, a reminder of the welcome offered to Jesus as he traveled towards the cross. Like the crowd in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago, we take our palm branches and greet Jesus shouting, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God, Hosanna in the highest. And we'll sing together all glory, laud, and honor as we welcome Jesus waving our palms.
be seated. Let's take a moment to pray. Merciful God, as we enter Holy Week and gather together in your house, turn our hearts again to Jerusalem, to the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Bring us at the last with him and all the faithful to your new Jerusalem, to your kingdom of peace and justice for all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed be the Christ, the P Prince of Peace. Who breaks down the walls that are us. The peace of God be with you all. The grace of Christ to unite us in peace. The peace of Christ be with each and every one of you today. And also with you. Peace be with you. As we prepare to hear the scriptures, let us pray for understanding. Illuminating God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you have, what you're saying to us today. Amen. So I invite Daria up to read the first um, scripture, which is Psalm 118, and we're actually going to read it with her. It's going to be responsively uh, read. Israel now say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. God is my strength and my song. God has, been, has become my salvation. There are shouts of joy and deliverance in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. I shall not die, but live and I shall proclaim what God has done. God indeed punished me, but did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of the temple, that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. I thank you for what you have, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, O God, we pray. God, we pray, give us success. 
Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. We bless you from the house of God. God, our God, has given us light. With palm branches in hand, let us march to the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Thank you, Dari, and I invite Joni up for the gospel. Our second reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, starting at verse 1. When they were nearing Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, on Mount Olives, he sent off two of the disciples with instructions. Go to the village across from you. As soon as you enter, you will find a colt tethered, one that has never yet been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone asks, what are you doing? Say, the master needs him and we will return him right away. They went and found a colt tied to the door at the street corner and untied it. Some of those standing there said, what are you doing untying that colt? The disciples replied exactly as Jesus had instructed them. And the people let them alone. They brought the colt to Jesus spread their coats on it, and he mounted. The people gave him a wonderful welcome, some throwing their coats on the street, others spreading out rushes that they had cut in the field. Running ahead and following after, they were calling out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in God's name. Blessed the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. He entered Jerusalem, then entered the temple. He looked around, taking it all in. But by now it was late, so he went back to Bethany with the twelve. Listen and reflect on these words to discover what their meanings hold for us in this place and time. Amen. Let's sing together again. This time he came riding on a donkey.
please be seated. Growing up, Palm Sunday was a celebration. It was a celebration waving palm branches and pretending to be part of this triumphant parade in Jerusalem. It was a joyous time for me. It was a good celebration. And I'm sure we've all heard the Palm Sunday story time and time again, similar to some of the others that come up in our church year, like Christmas and Easter. And it's easy to think, well, you know, we heard it last year. We know the Palm Sunday story. Let's enjoy Palm Sunday, wave our branches, and go home. But have we stopped? Have we stopped to think critically about what happened that day? why it happened that day. In Jesus' ministry, at least to this point in his ministry, I can't think of a time where Jesus set out to draw attention to himself. I certainly can't think of a time where he would have arranged to have the attention drawn to himself. Yes, he had large crowds following him all the time. Certainly people wanted to see him, wanted to hear his teachings be blessed by him. But it wasn't something Jesus arranged. It was something where people came to him. There was never a time that I can think of where he boasted about what he could do or made himself seem and feel bigger than others. In fact, when he turned the water into wine, his first miracle, he did it quietly on the side and after feeding the 5,000, Jesus slipped away to avoid being the center of attention. And other times, Jesus would try and take the disciples somewhere quiet. Didn't always work when crowds followed, but he did try. And yet in today's reading, we have Jesus instructing the disciples to go and get a young colt and bring it to me. Now, if Jesus was tired of walking, I believe he would have just taken a rest. And if he needed a ride, why would have he asked for a young colt, a colt that never had been ridden? Why not a donkey that had been used to carrying people? And with all the crowds that follow Jesus everywhere, I can't imagine Jesus thinking that borrowing a young colt and riding into Jerusalem on this donkey would not create some sort of scene. So if Jesus is trying to create a scene, what is it all about? What is Palm Sunday all about? And why, if Jesus has been trying to be low-key in his ministry to this point, has Jesus decided to make this triumphant entry into Jerusalem in such a public way? The more I read about Palm Sunday, the more challenging Palm Sunday actually becomes for me. On the surface, it appears like a joyous celebration, and certainly there was a joyous crowd and a wonderful parade. But I wonder if behind that, the idea was something very different. I wonder if Jesus is staged riding into Jerusalem on the donkey was a political protest. It was a way to show contrast between God's way and Rome's way. A way of peaceful defiance or a demonstration of sorts towards Rome. I wonder how many that were there that day understood what Jesus was trying to do or say. I wonder if some of the people there, many, maybe many of the people there, missed some of the significance of it. They simply got wrapped up in the crowds and in the joyous shouting and the welcoming of their king, just like I did as a child. Just like we can easily do if we're walking down the street and something's happening, or if we're in the mall and there's shouting and things happening. However, 
I suspect that Rome would have seen Jesus' acts very differently than the people on the street. I suspect that they would have perceived his acts as a threat to the Roman Empire for anyone having or pretending to have authority over people or the place would be considered a threat. In fact, Jesus' teachings to this point probably already made him a fairly big threat to the Roman Empire, even though that may not have been his intent. I also wonder if Jesus' entry into Jerusalem may have been seen as the Roman Empire as a mockery. Marcus Borg and John Dominic Crossan are New Testament scholars and in a book they wrote called The Last Week. They suggest that at the very same time as Jesus is riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, on the opposite side of Jerusalem, in the opposite gate, and remember Jerusalem is surrounded by a wall for protection, so only had a few gates. Riding in in the opposite gate was the Roman governor. The Roman governor had was riding up from the coastal residence where he would be to Jerusalem to oversee the Passover. See, during the Passover, Jerusalem's population would multiply, not a little bit, but a lot, from usually around, what I understand, 50,000 to at least 200,000 with Jewish pilgrims coming from all over for the Passover. So the governor would always be there to remind the Jews who is in charge, and to make sure there was no trouble with all the extra people around. See, they feared that with so many Jews in town at that time of year, it might be a good time for the Jews to try and rebel against Rome, because there's power in numbers. So the governor wanted to ensure that they didn't. Imagine if Cambridge's population tomorrow grew to a half a million people. Or if Waterloo Region, if we look at the broader area, grew to over two and a half million people, about the size of Toronto, all comes to Waterloo Region, would we not be concerned at what might happen or who might come? So too does Rome. So we have the governor riding in, in one gate, on a mighty stallion, leading a cavalry of horses, and a century of Roman foot soldiers there to show Rome's might and to keep the peace by force. There you had a noisy procession, stomping of marching feet and horse hooves beating on the streets and the beating of the drums to keep the feet in step. There would have been onlookers. They were probably silent, perhaps awed or curious or afraid, and if they were Jewish, probably resentful of Rome and what Rome meant to them and to their Jerusalem. So that's the gate on one side of Jerusalem. On the other side of Jerusalem, we have Jesus riding in on a humble colt with no armor, no protection, no army to follow him, preaching of a lasting peace. Not a peace through force, but a lasting peace. Preaching of justice and freedom for all. And drawing crowds probably bigger than what the Roman army would have drawn. But not just that, crowds that wanted to be there, that wanted to be part. Not resentful people, but people that wanted to be part. So Jesus' mockery of the Roman ways and ideals, whether it was intended or not, would have upset Rome and would not have been a good way to keep his relations with Rome in good check. But Jesus was unafraid. Jesus was unafraid to show God's way in God's kingdom. Jesus was unafraid to show the contrast between the ideals of two ways of living, peace by force or a lasting peace, trust and love 
or forced occupation and fear. So I wonder, I wonder, was Jesus making a peaceful stand for the oppressed? Was he making a political statement? Jesus could have just quietly slid into Jerusalem. Well, maybe not totally quietly because he's always followed by people, but in relative terms, quietly slid into Jerusalem with all the other Jews. Jesus could have quietly participated in the Passover celebrations and then gone home like all the others. But instead, Jesus chose to risk it all. And I'm sure upsetting Rome isn't a risk-free option, but to risk it all up to and including death, to stand up for what he believed in, to stand up for God's world. So that's very fine, that's some 2,000 years ago, but what does that mean for us today, for you and for me? I believe on this Palm Sunday we have a choice. We have a choice to join a joyous celebration, innocently waving our palm branches high, and then tomorrow going back to our day-to-day -day life and forgetting all about it. Or we have a choice to look at Palm Sunday as a reminder, a reminder of what we need to stand up for, what we need to do to believe, no matter how unpopular it may be with others. Palm Sunday may be a reminder for us to speak out for the oppressed, to help those in need, and to speak out for God's kingdom, to be God's hands and feet in the world, and to do it God's way. Not with force or violence, but with unwavering faith. Unwavering faith to follow Jesus to the cross. Political stands and challenging the oppressor aren't things that I normally associate with Jesus. However, I wonder if that's what it is today. I wonder if Jesus is saying there's a time to learn and grow in our faith and a time where we need to stand up for what we believe, to stand up for equality and fairness and justice for all, for God's world to come. So on this Palm Sunday, do we join the celebration, that triumphant parade, innocently? Or do we wave our palm branches high as we stand for what we believe, as we try and usher in God's kingdom? Do we go home and then just go about another week, just like last week or the week before? Or do we join Jesus? Do we follow Jesus all the way to the cross as we usher in a new kingdom? a new power and a new way of life, God's kingdom, God's power, and God's way of life with freedom and peace and justice for all. Do we take up Jesus' call and Jesus' song? The choice is ours, yours and mine. It's each of ours to make. It's a choice to be called by God, and we're each called in God's own way. God gives us the freedom to make the choice, to choose to follow Jesus to the cross, or not, just to wave the palm branches and join the triumphant celebration. But regardless of how we approach this Palm Sunday, Regardless of the choices we make, we can be assured that God loves us and God will walk with us 
each and every day, regardless of where that journey is. Thanks be to God. outreach and response to our campaign for Lazard House and for all the donations to the Cambridge Food Bank. We give thanks for the financial support from each and every one of you to St. Luke's United Church so we can consider, continue our ministries. Our offering will now be received as we sing, Your Work, O God, Needs Many Hands.
Holy God, you come to us in Jesus, a poor man riding on a donkey. We thank you for this witness of the power of love and peace, despite the powers of this world. We thank you for all who have withstood evil, who have suffered the jeers and worse of the crowds, who have been tormented, even put to death, and still be refused to use the weapons of hatred. We thank you for the times we've been able to let go of our defenses, give up control, and live with open hands and hearts. We thank you with hosannas, with joy in our hearts, in the name of Jesus, our leader. Amen. Please be seated. God calls us to be a praying people. So let's take a moment to join in prayer, offering praise and thanksgiving and our intercessions to God. Let us pray. Lord of all being and source of every blessing, we thank you for all good things, for life and love, health and food, for work and home, for nature's beauty and comfort, for human skills and for human laughter, for memory and hope, for everything which gives us pleasure, nourishment, and strength. Gracious God, we pray for the faithful all over the world that all who love you may be united in your service. We pray for the church. We pray for the peoples and leaders of all nations, that they may be reconciled one to another in pursuit of your justice and of lasting peace. We pray for the world. We pray for all who suffer from prejudice, greed, or violence, that the heart of humanity may warm with your tenderness. We pray for all prisoners of politics or religion and for all refugees. We pray for all who are oppressed. We pray for all in need of by reason of famine, flood, earthquake, or other natural disasters, that they may know the hope of your faithfulness through the help of others. We pray for all people affected by natural disasters. We pray for the land, the sea, and the sky that we may live with respecting your creation, use your gifts with reverence, and share your gifts equitably with all. We pray for the earth. We pray for all who suffer the pain of sickness, loneliness, fear, or loss that those whose names are in our hearts, in the hearts of others, or known only to you, may receive strength and courage. We pray for those in need. O oh God, in Jesus Christ, your triumphant entry into Jerusalem, thus beginning the week of pain and sorrow. In these days of defeat and victory, you have brought together humiliation, exaltation, death, and resurrection. Be with us now as we follow in joy and in sorrow the way to the, of the cross, in the footsteps of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. 
And together, let us sing the Lord's Prayer as Jesus taught us. Together, let us sing, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. have started our journey to the cross with Jesus. Continue to follow Jesus this week on that difficult road to the cross. God was with Jesus every step he took. Know that God is also with you always, rejoicing with you in your good times and being at your side in your difficult times, for you are a loved and blessed child of God. As we depart, we'll sing, take up his song. And I invite you after that to, if you'd like to lay your palms either down the aisle or up at the front here as our procession out.